The case of Rwandan national Valgasen Kaishema, believed to be a fugitive wanted in connection with the 1994 genocide in Rwanda, his country has been postponed to the 27th of October. He appeared briefly in the Cape Town Magistrates Court a short while ago. Earlier on uh, this week, the suspect appeared in the High Court in Cape Town, where international authorities brought an urgent application to have him extradited. He was arrested on a warrant to have him stand trial in the International um, Residual Mechanism for Criminal Tribunals in Arusha, Tanzania. SABC News reporter Atula Joka and video journalist Clinton uh, Kauf are on this story and Atula now joining us live. Uh, good morning. Thank you so much for making time for us. So it seems that there was a short uh, court appearance. What transpired? Indeed, uh, Aldrin, it was a very short uh, court appearance. Um, it was postponed to the 27th of October, pending more investigations on the charges that he is facing. Mr. Fulgens appears calm every time he takes it to the stand. He came today um, uh, clutching a Bible. Uh, he put it there and then he stood there. And then um, the, the prosecutor said they want to add an additional 27 charges to the 54 charges that he is currently facing. So they asked for some more time to uh, conduct those further investigations. Uh, among those 54 charges that he is facing, is facing uh, nine counts of fraud and 10 accounts of contravention of Immigration and Refugees Act. We understand that he was arrested in PAL in May for under uh, a false identity. And we understand that he's been pursued for over 20 years after a warrant of arrest was um, issued by the U United Nations uh, Inter International uh, Criminal uh, Tribunal for him to have him arrested for the crimes that happened in Rwanda in 1994. Uh, amongst those crimes was the, um, the killing of over 2,000 people which were seeking refuge in a church in Rwanda. But I do have a family, a friend uh, who will speak to us, Mr. Joseph uh, Habishu. Mr. Joseph, you can uh, stand here. Uh, just talk to us about the nature of the charges that are being faced by your friend or your family friend, Mr. Um, Kaishema. At uh, this stage, we are still facing the charges of Immigration Act and the Refugee Act, but uh, at the bigger picture, it's those alleged, which we believe it's a lies from the Rwandan government of genocide and the complicity in the genocide, which will maybe be treated with the court at the later stage. Uh, when he was arrested in Pal, he was arrested under a false name. Can you talk to us as to what was the reason for that? The reason is because when you are charged with a heavy and uh, charges like genocide and they know it's a lie but they don't have any ground to stand because you are dealing with the powerful people so you have to hide yourself otherwise you will be killed for nothing or arrested and be eliminated for nothing so it was only for his safety not to any under under way because as you know the, during the 22 years they have been here, he have never used that first name to commit any crime or any, any manufactures. So that's why to use a first name, it was only for his safety and the safety of his family, nothing else. Some of those uh, charges that he is wanted for, uh, especially in Rwanda, are very serious. Uh, they speak to genocide. Can you talk to us about the genocide in, in, in Rwanda? Did you experience it? When did you leave Rwanda? Just the nature, what, what happened there? 1994, first 1990, our, our beloved country have been attacked by a group coming from Uganda, killing people. And in 1994, when the, the airplane transporting uh, two president Abjariman and uh, Narjamira from Burundi were gunned down. There were killings done with the people and with this because they forget that there was rebels army in a country, some in the capital, who started to kill people and what they were as it we think is a massacres which killed both parties Hutu and Tutsi but for the regime in Kigali, they labeled as a genocide against the Tutsi. The figures, they said one million. It's, we, we can't contest it, but considering that in Rwanda there were less than one million Tutsi and 
More than 500 are now under umbrella of survivors. We can question if we are one million was killed and uh, 500 Tutsi who are survivors are still existing. Who now, those one million, if they want to call it against the Tutsi, why they don't call it genocide of Rwandans? Because more than half a million who are killed are not Tutsi, are Hutu. So before it was now massacres and uh, extermination, but now it's under the label of genocide against Tutsi, which the name itself say itself. I want us to talk about Mr. Kaishema. Um, the authorities say he was a policeman and he was also involved, he was complicit in some of the killings that happened. Talk to us about him. Who is he and um, what was he, to, what position did he hold back at home? Kaishema was a teacher all his life until 1994, who was, uh, because of his wiseness and uh, his mature, was asked to be like a advisor in a local court, which you can call like a CCMA. So he was a counselor there. So he had no authority, nothing. He was a simple teacher, he was a simple citizen. But that name of Kaishema, as I told you last time, Kaishema, there was uh, the prefect who is like a premier, who also is Kaishema. We still believe that accusing him was only because they were looking for Kaishema, who is Clement, not Frisians. But end of the day, when they got Kaishema Clement in 2004 or 5, they didn't dare enough to go and say, oh, we got our men. They still look for him. And that's why you see these under fast titles as police officer, military officer, which none touch our family men who was only a simple teacher in primary school. He is now called a fugitive by some people because he was using a false identity and he didn't present himself to the police, maybe even the South African authorities. Why didn't he do that? And also over these years, what, what was he doing there in Pal? He was working to make life, but uh, you as a South African, you should know better that until in uh, Mandela funeral, we knew that Mbeki was using a first passport of Tanzania with uh, first names. We believe that all those politicians we have here under the struggle of ANC were not using their names. Lindy Wezulu, who was in Russia, I believe she wasn't Lindy Wezulu. So it's normal because before 1994, all ANC members were able to terrorist. No, none of them could go easily unless he used a first name and a first document. But today, the authority, respected the authorities, they are no longer terrorists. So we are suffering. When the genocide, when the apartheid stopped in 1994 in South Africa, another apartheid under another name was starting in Rwanda, is what most of us Rwandans are suffering from 1994. So we need international community, especially South Africans who can understand better to defend us and know what we are suffering. Okay. Um, w w what do you think about he, his case about being, being, about being extradited um, because the International uh, Residual Mechanism uh, Tribunal, cri Criminal Tribunal, want him extradited to, to Tanzania, Arusha, to face some of these crimes. Um, do you think he will find justice there? What do you think about that process? Tanzania, Arusha doesn't exist anymore. Six years ago, it was closed. They opened the, its office in Rwanda, in Remera, near stadium and the prison of Tanzania have been transferred in Rwanda in another prison we called Mpanga. So when they even say that in a court, we laugh because we know it's Rwanda. So now imagine the regime of Peter Botta is looking for you and you are arrested. They say you are taking you somewhere in, in Holland, but they, they bring you in Cape Town that time in 1980. What would happen? So it's like the, the one who is accusing you falsely is the one who now going to just sit there, become a judge. So there is no justice at all. Isn't your country in under like a democratic regime now? On a paper, it's under democratic, but uh, in reality, 
they change the constitution that the president will remain until 2034. So if that is uh, your democracy, for me, it's a joke. Please confirm your names again and your relation to Mr. Kaishema. My name is Joseph, my son name is Habin Shuti, and uh, I'm a family friend, but um, it's more than a friend because it's, it was like my family since I was in school with his brother-in-law in 1984. Thank you so much. Welcome. Mr. Joseph Habishuti, he calls himself a family friend to Mr. Uh, Kaishema, who is charged with 54 charges in this magistrate court. And uh, the state says they want to add a more additional 27 charges to him. He's saying, of course, he is being uh, persecuted uh, by the current regime uh, because he was involved in the previous regime of that particular country. He does not want him to be extradited in that country, saying, of course, he will not uh, find a justice there, Aldrin. Um, Mr. Kaishema is facing two parallel um, uh, charges. He's going to two different courts at the same time. Just, just this week he appeared before the High Court uh, for those extradition charges. Uh, the International uh, Me Residual Mechanism Tribunal Court wants him to be extradited to Tanzania in Arusha to face some of those war crimes that happened in Rwanda in 1994. And here he's facing those Immigration and Refugees Act for using a falsified identity. Uh, his family friends believe that he will not find justice. They want him to to remain here in South Africa. He will be applying for asylum as well. His lawyers said they are still busy with that particular application. Thank you so much for your time, Atule Choka there.